Well, we are officially halfway through the year, and if I had to guess, your New Year's resolutions are covered in dust, along with your hopes and dreams of being the best you this year. <laughs> Fear not. In this video, I'm going to give you five things to do right now to get yourself back on track. It's okay to feel discouraged if you're not where you want to be right now, but let's make sure that we use that as motivation to get where we want to be, okay? Six months is still a lot of time. You could be an entirely different person living an entirely different life in six months from now if you're willing to put in the work. Number two, set specific parameters and create a shorter time frame for your goals. Now, if you've never heard of Parkinson's law, it is a term that was first coined by Cyril Parkinson in a humorous essay he wrote for The Economist in 1955 that states, work expands to fill the time allotted for its completion. So basically, if you give yourself six months to do something, it's going to take six months. It is in most people's nature to procrastinate, which is okay. We can accept that about ourselves, but also take steps to improve our tendency to push things off. By shortening your deadlines for your goals and tasks, you're far more likely to get that thing done quicker. Instead of leaving your six month goal at six months, try breaking it down into smaller, more attainable goals. For example, if you want to save $10,000 by the end of the year, break that into a monthly goal and maybe even a weekly and daily goal. If you wanna save $10,000 in six months, you would need to save $16.67 a month or $4.17 a week or $56 a day. Number three, make your tracking process more fun. Ideally, you should be getting joy out of the process of whatever goal you're trying to achieve. I think one of the easiest ways to do that is just making the tracking process more enjoyable. I'm a fairly creative person, so I enjoy kind of DIYing trackers, whether that's digital trackers in Canva or maybe even doing it like in my bullet journal. I like to draw and that kind of stuff. You can also create trackers and things like Google Sheets or Notion. And also both of those things have tons of template options. If you're not someone that wants to necessarily create it yourself, there is a high likelihood that someone else out there has created it and probably has a free template for you to use. Having something that you can look at regularly that excites you is obviously just going to make the progress that much more satisfying. Number four is to review what you have accomplished and where you're falling short. If you created goals in the beginning of the year, find out where you are with no judgment reviewing those goals that you did set at the beginning of the year, right? Did you have any New Year's resolutions? Did you have a goal for who you wanted to be at the end of this year? Do you have specific goals? Ideally, you want specific goals, right? Because you're going to be more likely to hit them the more specific they are. If you didn't have goals, now is also a really good time to set those. I personally have goals for my health, my finances, my relationships, work. I think that's it. Did I say hobbies? even like fun goals, things that I want to make sure I try to do this year and try to prioritize. The biggest thing here is just really taking that time to be mindful and imagining the person that you want to be and the life that you want to have and using this time to create steps in order to get there. Take this next six months to actually become the person that you want to become. I think that this is a great time to do a financial review. I use a tracker by Money with Katie, who is awesome. I love her podcast. There are also just a ton of free templates. There are a million budgeting apps. I also use Copilot. That's another one that is a paid subscription app, um, but it's like the best budgeting software I've ever found. See what you're spending on. For me personally, I'm a little bit behind on what I want for my annual save rate. My goal this year is very aggressive. I'm trying to save slash invest at least 45% of my income. And I'm currently tracking at about 42, 43%. Obviously I'm excited that I'm fairly close, but at the end of the day, like if I don't pay attention to that, I probably will not hit my goal. Financial goals are huge for me. And I also feel like it's something that's super easy to track. And at the end of the day, it's something that impacts all of us. 
Once you've reviewed everything, it's time to reset yourself, okay? Reset your life. And one of the best ways to do that is just to clean your space. They always say that a cluttered space is a cluttered mind, and I genuinely believe that is so true. I was a big time over consumer. Um, I'm still healing that, I'm still working on that, but I am so much better than I was. I truly do always feel a hundred times better when my sheets are clean and there's groceries restocked in the fridge and all my laundry is done. You genuinely feel like a different person. It really puts you in the right physical and mental space to be able to focus on other things and focus on achieving all of those goals that you set for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel, especially if you're into videos on minimalism, money, and mindset. I hope to see you soon. Go get those goals!